Alright, what is up guys? Code 29 is back with a brand new video. In today's video, we are going to be doing part 11, I think, to our beginner scripting series. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at local scripts and GUIs. I also don't know what's going on with the toolbox. I just opened this up today. I don't know if anybody's having the same problem, but these models are not at all what, um, what the usual models are. I'm a little bit concerned about this, I'm not going to lie, because um, these are not what they should be, but... Without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, so for today, we are doing, um, like I said, local scripts and GUIs. And what are GUIs? So GUIs are graphic user interface, all right? Um, and what that means is that's that's what the player sees on just their screen. So like all the buttons that you see, uh, or if there's a little coin thing in the corner right here, you know, uh, that thing. Um, it, that's called a GUI. So how do we do that? So let me explain that first. Um, you, we can go into starter GUI right here and click the plus. Um, and in here we're going to have to insert something called a screen GUI. Now a screen GUI is what holds everything um, on your in your GUIs, like frames and buttons and stuff like that. And for this example, let's go ahead and insert a frame. Okay, so we're going to click the plus icon inside of the screen GUI and type in frame and click the frame. So now we have this little like frame thing right here up in the top, and we can uh, we can go ahead and click the frame in the start of GUI and come over and we can drag it around the screen, okay? And we can also resize it like this, like you would resize anything else. Uh, well, not really; it's two dimensional, but. Um, this is our frame, okay? So this is what's going to be holding everything um, that we need. Uh, so for this, last time we made a coins script. So in this one, we're going to be hooking up their coins to this GUI right here, okay? So what we can do is we can just drag this into the bottom left corner. And now we have this little GUI that will stay here, okay? Um, or this frame. Now let's go ahead and change some of these properties because I want to maybe have the background color be kind of a uh, yellowish sort of a thing because this is coins that we're talking about. Uh, we can maybe do that sort of thing, kind of a golder color, something like that. I don't know, I'm not very good with colors. Something like that is fine. Okay, like a mustardy color. Um, so we can click that frame. And now we can change some more properties. One of them that I use all the time is called background transparency right here. And this is a slider that makes it more and less transparent like our parts in our game. It's just a GUI instead. So now we have this slightly transparent frame in the corner. Um, and I think that might look okay. We could also try making it completely invisible by transparency completely one. And now we don't see it, but it's still there. I'm going to go ahead and leave the transparency to zero so it's fully visible in the corner. Alright, so let's go ahead and get right into the scripting of this. So first first things first, we got to insert a uh, something where we can hold our text, okay? Let's go ahead and click the plus icon here and click text label. Now a text label is this right here. It's a label that you can put your text in, okay? So we can just scale this to be the same as the um, frame we made. And then we're, we're just going to move it a little bit to the right and then ta uh, change the background transparency to something like 1. Okay, so it's see-through. Alright, so now we have our text and it says label. If we scroll down into the properties uh, to text, we can change its text right here. To A, B, C, D, E, F, G, we can change it to whatever we want. Here we're just going to say coin, uh, we can just give a default of zero coins. And something you're always, most always going to want to click is called text scaled. Check that, and now it'll scale it to there. So we have this nice looking uh, thing right here. Something I'm going to do really quick is go ahead and make it back to the transparency uh, zero again so that we can see where it starts. And then we're going to insert a little image of a coin right there. So what we can do is we can insert instead of that frame something called an image label. These are all things that you can have inside of a GUI. In this image label, we're going to go ahead and scale it down. We can bring it up and scale it down and then put it back in here and scale it to fit uh, that little zone right here. Okay, that looks good. So this is the automatic Roblox um, default picture. Um, but we can click this image right here. You could actually click add image to find an image from your computer if you want to do that. 
But I'm just going to go in here to the images, and we can do kind of what we did uh, last time. Just search in a coin, and we can find an image of a coin. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit more. We can use the Mario coin that we used last time. Maybe it's not a Mario coin, like I said. It can be whatever you want. But I'm actually going to use this one because this one looks nice. Thank you to whoever made this this coin. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> so I just dragged it onto the base plate because I just want to copy the ID. So how do we do that? We come into the properties where it says texture, click that, and copy the URL. Control C or Command C if you're on a Mac. And then we can delete that decal from the base plate by hitting backspace. Now we can go into this image label, scroll on down to image, and we can paste that ID that we found. And now we have a little coin right there in the um, in the image. So we can sometimes with some images we can change the background transparency um, as well to something like zero. Um, this image, however, has a white background. Others have a alpha transparent an alpha transparent background, sorry. Um, but this is going to be fine for now. So here I'm going to go ahead and put the um, background transparency back to one for the text. All right, so now we have our little coin GUI that will stay here. Now if we play the game, we can play it, but you'll notice when we do play it, nothing really happens. So nothing really happens. It's not actually showing the coins we have. Yeah, so it's not really doing anything like I said. All right, so how do we make it change, right? So we're going to want to script this for sure. Um, but how do we script it in this case? So we can give these all a name. Let's just call this like coin frame so that, so that it's organized. Coin image. And this is uh, coin text, okay? And now you may be thinking, let's insert a script into this coin text. And you, you're on the right track. But when you do anything in starter GUI, all right, with anything in the GUIs, you're going to do something called a local script. So you're going to insert a local script into the coin text. And this is the exact same thing as a script, except it just runs on the client. Now, what does that mean? So in Roblox, there are two things. There's the client and the server. And I'm going to try and put this simply as simply as I can, um, but we will dive into it more next week when we do remote events. Um, but the client, let's go ahead and play it to show you. This was created, wasn't recently anymore, it was at least a couple years ago, I think. So this was created by Roblox, and we can see when we play our game, we see this button called Current Client. And what this is saying is we are currently in the client, okay? The client is whatever the actual, just the player sees, so what only what I see. But when we click this Current Client and go into the server, the server is what everyone sees, okay? So let me try this really quick. Let's go back to the client by clicking that. So this is only what I see. What if I insert a part right here in the client? Well, I can see that, and it's shown up here in the Explorer for me, but once we go into the server, there's nothing, okay? There is no part because it's only for me. This was developed, uh, this uh, is part of something called filtering enabled. It was developed um, to help stop hackers, uh, I believe. At least that was part of it. Um, it helps people that um, are trying to hack to not be able to hack because if they because if they run if they run a piece of code from the client and they say game dot workspace colon clear all children if they just know what they're doing and they get rid of everything and the game oh the game is not fun anymore there's nothing well guess what hacker you have only ruined it for yourself because everybody else sees that. So that's a very uh, quick explanation of filtering enabled and um, client and server. So the local script is going to happen only for the client or the player that's playing it. So we can go ahead and say local player. So we have a new variable called player. And then we can say equals uh, game.players.localPlayer. So this is a built-in thing for only local scripts. Okay? Only local scripts. And local scripts can say game.players.localPlayer because they're running on the client. So they're going to find the player. We can now find the local player or the player that's currently playing the game. Okay? I hope that makes sense. And then let's also create another variable uh, that's the local text equals script dot parent. Okay? So we're saying that's the, we can just call this uh, coin text. Okay? Um, so we know that this is our coin text 
that is this right here, whatever script's inside of. So it runs the same way. We can say uh, coin text, whoop, coin text, and then we can look at the coin text right here, and we can just scroll on down to the properties, and we have a property called text. So we can change the text, and we can say dot text equals player dot coins dot value. Okay, and if you named it something else not coins then change the coins to whatever you named your currency oh I'm sorry we didn't we need to say dot leader stats because it's currently in the leader stats so let's um let's make sure to say dot leader stats um dot leader stats okay my bad so we had to go into the leader stats first because that's their folder um so now let's go ahead and play this hopefully now so we still are getting an oh that's not true nothing's happening you know why because it's not in a while loop so remember while loops when we did those so we're gonna have to say while true actually just while wait point one do and we can just say end here so it's gonna every point one second it's gonna update the text okay so it's gonna set it to the current their current amount of coins so now we can see that the text is uh, is going up with the amount of coins we have and we can see that it's uh, changing every se uh, every second um, because our amount of coins is going up and here's the thing we could go in here to the coins like we're talking about clients and all that we could change our coin value to a hundred and it's gonna show we have a hundred but it's quickly reset and that's because we didn't do it on the server we only did it on the client and this script that's handling the um, the leader stats is running on the server and not the client. I hope that makes sense. It's a, it's a confusing topic. Um, filtering enabled. But um, yeah, so that is local scripts. But let's do one more thing. Um, let's just show you something else we can do. So we can insert a text button inside of this um, screen GUI. And let's just move it here. Okay. And maybe we want to um, have this toggle a shop. And we're not going to make a shop today. I just want to show you how we can do that. Um, we can hit text scaled and change the text to toggle shop. And here we want the player to be able to toggle the shop. Okay, so we're, let's, let's insert a frame, another one. And this is going to be our shop. All right. So we can do this. Insert a text label drag it over or drag it all the way across and hit text scaled and say shop okay just like that and here is our shop okay so yes this is a shop um so this is our shop for today but we can just call this frame shop frame and we can come down into the properties and see where it says visible we can uncheck that and now it's no longer visible so Let's just rename this button something like uh, toggle shop and let's enter the local script because local scripts of course are what we, we, we want to use because we don't want this to run on the cl uh, server, we want it to run on the client. We want only the person who clicked the button to see the shop. That way um, we don't have one player click the shop and then everybody sees the shop button. That wouldn't be good. Uh, sorry, the shop frame, not button. So we can say script.parent.mouseButton1click. So this is another event, and this is only for buttons, okay? Text buttons or image but buttons, uh, which we haven't done yet, but um, that's what we use for a built-in function. So this is going to happen whenever the player clicks um, the, uh, the button. We can say colon connect function right here. And all I have to say is script.parent.parent, .parent, okay, so we're, we're saying that .parent, so the, the shop button, and then up one more, so the screen GUI, whoops, I have a typo, parent, um, dot, and then we can say dot shop frame, dot visible, equals, and then let's just copy this right here, and we can say equals not script.parent. Dot shop. Oh, mic fell. Can you still hear me? All right, the mic still works. Okay. Um, so this is just saying we're gonna make it visible or not visible. We're gonna do whatever it's currently not. 
So if it is visible, we're going to make it invisible. If it's invisible, we're going to make it visible. I hope that makes sense. But we can also do something else. We can say local um, open equals false. So we've created a variable called open. And we can say if open equals equals false. Then, so if uh, the, whoops, this local open needs to be outside of that right here, okay? Because we don't want this to happen. We, want, we don't want it to be false every single time they click it. We want it to start out as false. So we can say if open is false, that means it's not open. The shop is not open, so we want to open it. So we can say script.parent.parent.shopframe.visible equals true. And else, so if it's true it's true or false. So if open is not false, then it's going to be true. So we can just say script.parent.parent dot shop frame dot visible equals false okay but we do have a slight problem here we're it's not going to work yet because we need to say open equals uh true because at this point we've already opened the shop and over here we can say open equals false so this is a like a debounce script this is confusing that's why i would definitely prefer to use the first one which is Whoop, not that. Uh, we can just undo all this. I would definitely prefer, um, and actually I'm going to go ahead and leave that here for you guys because I want you guys to be able to see this, but I am going to comment out uh, whoop, all this because I'm going to use the first thing I showed you. If you're doing a toggle sort of thing, I would definitely recommend doing this first one, which is just saying script.parent.parent.shopframe.visible equals not script dot parent dot uh whoop, script dot parent dot parent dot shop frame dot visible so we're setting it to invisible if it's already visible or visible if it's invisible so that's how we can do that and in the next video we're going to be doing something called remote events which is going to allow us to have a player click a button and maybe it'll um spawn a part in here for everybody to see and not just the client so that'll be fun uh so we can toggle the shop and it'll toggle the shop, right? Um, so that is G that are those are GUIs. Um, so those are always fun, and they are really essential to a game because all the GUI, uh, all the games have GUIs. You know, all of them have some sort of a GUI. I'm gonna reset my character. Even if I reset my character, these should work. Um, this will uh, go back to zero for a, a second, but then it's gonna come back to my current amount we can still toggle the shop so that all works so yeah i guess that's it so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure to like and subscribe and click that notification bell we're over two and a half thousand subscribers so thank you all for all the support um and yeah make sure to join my roblox group if you want to support the channel in that way or grab the roblox shirt um and yeah so tune in next week remote events gonna be fun and thank you for watching i'll see you next time